hey, you may not care to be a billionaire one day, but you might have dreams of being a millionaire. So I figure, what can it hurt to learn some frugal tips from a billionaire? So on today's Money Article Monday, we are going to talk about an article called Eight Frugal Living Tips to Learn from Warren Buffett. Before we get started, if you are new here, my name is Jennifer and on my channel, I make videos weekly on saving money and living a simple life. I'm also documenting our journey to being mortgage free by the year of 2024 and ultimately being financially independent. So if any of that interests you, make sure you click on that subscribe button. On Money Article Monday, we pick a blog or an article that relates to money and we chat about it. As always, I will have it linked down below in the description box for you to read in its entirety. This one is called Eight Frugal Living Tips to learn from Warren Buffett. It was written by Gail Cooper and I found it on msn.com and I'm fairly sure we've read uh, or discussed another article by Gail Cooper as well. So let's see what this one has to say. Warren Buffett is constantly listed as one of the world's richest people with an estimated net worth of more than $100 billion. Do you think he's going to go to the moon next? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe he's not interested in that. I don't know. But unlike another billionaire, he doesn't live in a sprawling $100 million lakeside home. What would that even look like? $100 million of a home. Would you not want to be on the ocean instead of a lake? I don't know. Just my opinion. No, the 90 year old chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway doesn't exactly live like a Kardashian. I always say this when I'm talking about living like the Joneses. Um, don't try to keep up with the Joneses. I always say don't try to keep up with the Kardashians because that's what most people are familiar with these days and Instagram and being Instagram famous and looking like an Instagram person. But for Warren Buffett, there was a great documentary on him. I cannot remember where I found it, but you could probably just Google Warren Buffett documentary. Um, and it talks about his life um, and it's very interesting and intriguing and he is a frugal person. Um, so I'm sure we'll read more about it in this article, but I actually really enjoyed that documentary and just understanding his story and watching the relationships he has with his children now, how they, I think they told in that uh, documentary that he worked all the time. So they're, they're, uh, parenting mostly came from their mother, but you can definitely check it out. That's one if you're looking for an interesting documentary that I would check out. It says that although Buffett could live like a Kardashian, instead he is quite the opposite. Buffett even once had a vanity license plate that read thrifty. And that license, pl license plate wasn't lying. Even those of us whose fortunes will never reach 1 billion, much less 100 billion, can take a few lessons from Buffett's relatively frugal lifestyle. So here are some tips. The first tip is buy a modest home. It says Buffett and his late wife, Susan, bought their Omaha home in 1958. Get this, for $31,000. $500. I'm reading a book on the Great Depression right now and it talks about in I think 1932 or 1933 when the Great Depression was just getting started how um, this one guy was evicted and but everybody came to try to keep him from being evicted that day but anyway his mortgage that he took out in his home was $8,900. Obviously it would be comparable but to see inflation from from I guess 1932 what his house would probably cost now <laughs> it's that is insane this says that the it's not tiny there are five bedrooms two and a half baths but he didn't replace it with a mega mat mansion once the money started rolling in yeah i think he had several children so he that's why i guess he bought a five bedroom house um he also did buy a california vacation home spending one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in 1971. Buffett actually still lives in that home in Omaha, if I'm not mistaken. So I think they show it in that documentary. So buying a modest home, not uh, what I see now is people needing to jump from house to house to house and keep it's the lifestyle creep, right? They they start making more money. So they want to buy the bigger, better house in the bigger, bigger, better neighborhood. And I completely understand if you, you know, have a growing family and you have a need to buy a bigger house or you, you know, do not like the neighborhood that you're in and you, you know, want to spend more. But people flip houses like they do jobs. I think that and I don't know if this is a more recent um, study, but something like people usually stay at jobs around five years or something that's on average. 
I feel like that happens a lot with houses too. They just aren't comfortable. And not to say you have to spend your lifetime in a house, but I, if I'm not mistaken, also I, I read a lot of statistics and things, so I oftentimes forget where they came from, but it said that you should stay in your house at least five years to get the most out of, um, I guess, the market and get the most profit. So it's, if you think of a house as an asset, um, a car is a, typically a depreciating asset. Usually, unless it's a vintage car, the price of it doesn't go up. But a house typically is an appreciating uh, asset. So the market goes up, obviously, <laughs> being that Warren Buffett bought his house in 1958 for $31,000. I'm sure if he sold it today, that would be the amount of commission that would go to the real estate agent, if not more, right? <laughs> Number two is don't be afraid to use coupons in front of your friends. I am most certainly not afraid to use coupons in front of my friends. And yes, I say coupons. I don't say coupons. If you say coupons, it's fine. Tomato, tomato, right? This is um, coupons save you money, so why not use them? Bill Gates marveled in a 2017 letter that he was once at a McDonald's in Hong Kong with Buffett. And I, I think Buffett really likes McDonald's. Like he goes there every single day. Again, watch the documentary. It says, you offered to pay, I think this is uh, Gates talking to Buffett, you offered to pay, dug into your pocket, and pulled out coupons, Gates wrote, Nothing, noting that his wife Melinda even took a photo of Buffett and his coupons. It reminded us how much you value a good deal. Number three is don't smoke or drink. This says both smoking and drinking require steady alleys of cash and neither is healthy for you, which could mean increased medical bills down the road. Buffett has never smoked or drunk alcohol and he's still with us at 90 years old. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that could say that they've smoked or drank and they're still not, they're 90 years old as well. But the amount of health problems that both of these actually can cause to you it's astonishing that we think of other things as being health issues and we forget about these things that are still promoted to us. Smoking can do a lot more damage than just to your lungs. It can actually collapse your veins. It can make you lose limbs. I've seen this firsthand. Number four, look for sales and deals. Whether we're talking about socks or stocks, I like buying quality mer merchandise when it is marked down, Buffett wrote. I love that. He doesn't necessarily, he doesn't want cheap stuff or quantity. He likes quality, but he wants to wait until it's marked down. And again, either stocks or socks, doesn't matter the cost of them. He's going to wait until he can get a good deal. You know, everybody's buying high right now in real estate, selling their houses, buying high. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm being patient. I think this is a great tip because what you can do, there are certain times during the year that certain things are a better deal. And I don't know if any of this is true, I'm just pulling this out of my rear end again. Um, but like appliances, maybe in January, that's the best time for them. And maybe computers, maybe it's August, that's the best time for them. So if you know that you need one of those things, go ahead and start saving now so you know when the best deal is. Rather than the computer dies tomorrow, you have to buy it in June, which is when it's its highest price. and you know, there you go. Um, being patient enough because everything goes on sale. I think there's what, 52 seasons a year, they say now, uh, where the fashion comes in and out. Everything is going to go on sale eventually. So buying full price, no, not for me. Number five is don't gamble. What's that saying about gambling? The house always wins. Buffett knows this and he said, that gambling is a tax on ignorance. That's an interesting saying. He once bought a slot machine for his home and paid his kids their allowance in dimes, knowing they couldn't resist to lower the lure of the slots and he'd have their allowance all back that same day. <laughs> that is good. I like it. They learned what Buffett and smart investors already know. Gambling doesn't pay. The house always wins. I have only gambled two times in my life. And honestly, the first time I did, I went to Atlantic City, it was like 2007. 
and I won $700 and I only spent about $10. Well, thinking I might actually recreate my luck on our honeymoon, there was a casino there. So I went and lost about 20 bucks. I thought, oh, nope, by the third try, if I didn't win like I did the first time, my luck wasn't gonna keep going, but I did do that. Now, gambling can also mean, you know, buying scratch offs, buying lottery tickets, and that's kind of a thing. So just remember how much you're actually spending on those, be careful with gambling, you know. Exactly. This next one could save so many people a lot of money and save so much waste. Just so much waste. It is number six. Don't upgrade possessions unless you have to. Now, have to and want to. Now, these days, everybody's definition of have to has gotten a little loose, you know what I'm saying? A little bit loose. Buffett famously used a Nokia flip phone for years, although he's since moved on to an iPhone. But his phone ownership history reveals a truth. Buffett's not only about paying big money for the latest. Buffett's not all about paying big money for the latest and greatest. Greatest. I don't throw anything away until I've had it at least 20 to 25 years. Buffett also showed that he has a 20 year old wallet. I'm sure the thing is probably about to fall apart, but this is interesting about the flip phone. My husband actually had a flip phone up until, let me see, 2018? Yes, so 2018. He loved his flip phone. He had like, it, it was his favorite thing. And when he got a regular phone, it was weird to watch him try to you know, use it. But my mom still hasn't upgraded from a flip phone. And I almost, almost want to say those things are just, you talk about, you know, being completely engulfed in um, your phone. Yeah, it's great for text and pictures and all this kind of stuff, which you can't really do on um, a flip phone as easily or as they don't come through as clear, etc. And your phone is a walking camera. You can take pictures of things. But what we've found that the benefits of the phone are um, the detrimental things that a phone can actually do now versus the good that they do way outweighs the good usefulness of that. Number seven is forget fancy food. This is where I was talking about. I think he goes to McDonald's like every day before work. Buffett could eat gold-plated lobster for every meal, even though that sounds horrible, but his eating habits are modest, if not super healthy. I don't like a $100 meal as well as a hamburger from McDonald's, Buffett told People Magazine. His daughter told People that Buffett regularly treats his grandchildren and great-grandchildren to monthly lunches, but not at five-star steakhouses. They go to a Berkshire Hathaway owned Dairy Queen. I like that. And they will probably always remember that. You can find some fabulous food at not expensive places. You just kind of have to test out and go around. But I've talked about this before. The, the cost of groceries is going up and the proportions um, that the groceries, like a bag of chips, the cost has gone up, but the amount of chips in the bag you know, the, the amount of air has now increased greatly in a bag of chips. Chips are my vice. I have been at restaurants recently and, you know, obviously the costs have gone up. I think inflation, the food, the getting their food, the gas to get the food there, they have to raise the prices. Also, in order to keep employees now, they're having to pay them more. I, I, I get it. But geez, I mean, talk about snowball effect. It's hitting everybody, right? And number eight is don't waste money on a lavish wedding. And I don't know, I think our wedding was probably like a like a mid-level. I, I loved it. But what ends up happening most of the time for weddings, and this actually did happen at mine as well, is I was so worried about everything else and everything going off without a hitch that I didn't in, get to enjoy as much of it as I had hoped for. So spending a ton of money, I think even in 2020, I think 2020 caused a lot of people who were planning to get married to rethink things. I've heard so many stories of people just having backyard weddings, going on a destination trip with, you know, 10 of their friends um, and family and doing it small. And I think that could be definitely the way to go. Because again, if inflation is going up everywhere else, 
you gotta admit, it's gonna hit you in your wedding as well. It's easy for an engaged couple to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on a fancy wedding. That's not for Buffett. When he and his second wife, Astrid Manx, wed in 2006, it was a brief civil ceremony at Buffett's daughter's house. The ceremony took 15 minutes. That's what I'm talking about. Don't need to be long. Let's make it quick. It was 95 degrees. We did ours outside, like the ceremony outside. And we did it um, in the, it was almost fall, almost fall, but it still happened to be 95 degrees that day. It was quite hot. Me and my husband were both like, hey, hurry it up. We're, we're roasting out here. Thank goodness everything else was inside. This says the ceremony took 15 minutes followed by a dinner at a casual seafood restaurant. I like that idea because you don't have to clean up. They do it themselves, order what you want. Buffett's daughter helped her dad pick out his wife's new ring at an Omaha jewelry store owned by Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> of course, right? Asked if Buffett received the employee discount on his perch, purchase. His daughter told the Times, I'm sure he did. I love that buying, especially from um, a local jewelry store. If you're buying something, um, supporting a local business, supporting a small business, I think is just something that we really, when we're investing in quality versus quantity, you know, we could buy something from these big places. And sometimes you just have to because there's not availability of a store a small store being open or helping out a small business but you know in, for instance with buying a ring at this place i think you know it's something we need to remember and try to try to do if you have the funds to do it you're not only getting a great product with from a hometown place but you're helping out somebody else so did we learn anything new from these eight tips from a billionaire we will see if he is the next one to go to the moon or if he's you know the age of 90 is too too much if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel i would love to have you back for more videos mm -hmm.